Just put the knife down. Everything will be okay. If you just put down the knife, we can talk about anything you want. Please. Please, just, just, just put the knife down. We, we, we can talk about all this. Well, as I said, your, your CV is excellent. Um, but we do have a few things to see. Thanks for the opportunity. What do you think? Yeah, I liked him. <laughs> it's just like we're totally in sync with each other. I mean, sometimes he doesn't even have to say anything. I just know what he means with a look. <laughs> and we're constantly finishing each other's sentences. Sentences. What do you think? Yeah, looks good. Can I help you? We're just looking, thank you. We are going to be buying something. We're, uh, we're celebrating. We just got engaged. Oh, most people get a ring. He's got me one of those. And now you thought you'd bring her in here. Well, we thought we'd be a little bit adventurous. Yes, Yvonne's husband thought that once, didn't he, Yvonne? Oh, he did, yes. Very adventurous. It was like the bloody Contiki expedition. <laughs> Come on, then. Sorry, where are we going? For an adventure. Ta-da, Kansas. <laughs> oh, I wasn't really looking for myself. If she's getting trussed up like a Christmas turkey, at least you can do is put on a party hat. <laughs> Personally, I don't really like the sight of men in their underpants. It's the bulge. For some reason, it puts me in mind of a pigeon. <laughs> Especially if the pants have gone grey. Are you decent? You can do a lot worse than this. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. No, no, women love a man who can make them laugh. Just think of Charlie Chaplin, a whole string of beautiful wives. Or Jim Davison. <laughs> so exciting when you're starting out, isn't it, on all them hopes and dreams? Hmm. It'll sag a bit after a few washes, but um, be at the back of the drawer by then, anyway. <laughs> Try the Forever Mine outfit in there. Here, give this a whirl. I'm not really sure about this. Oh, nonsense. After a while, you'll find it's the little pleasures that keep your marriage going. You know, I used to like it when my husband dressed up as a traffic warden, because it meant he was leaving for work. <laughs> Come on, then. Let's be having you. I can see you two together for an eternity. <laughs> More of a wren than a pigeon. That's it. Just get behind him, folks. Watch that man on the way. You're a very promising young fly half there, Bill. I was wondering whose jag that was in the car park. MI6 still buying British, I see. If it is still British, Bill. Hard to tell who's behind what these days. Is it the Germans? The Malaysians? The Russians? What do you want, Danbury? I've got a job for you, Bill. I already have a job. I'm not for hire. Don't just stand there, Jarvis! Mark him! Everything else in the world might have changed, but not you, Bill. Not you. I know you, Bill. You'll have every resource. The best people. Your pick. I'll see to that. If I do it, then they're coming with me. Who? The team. They've got to be in it too. <laughs> they're, they're a prep school under 12's rugby team, Bill. This isn't for negotiation. I made a commitment to these boys, Danbury, and this might seem odd to you, but I'm going to honour that commitment. <laughs> This isn't a box of firecrackers, Sergei. It's weapons-grade plutonium. Now, how much? <laughs> Check it, folks. Thinking about going to church? Not sure if church is for you? 
Then text Vicar to 97148. <laughs> At Church Match Mobile, there are thousands of clergy all over the UK looking for someone just like you. Hi, I'm Lewis. If you're looking for vicars who are really great fun, Church Match Mobile is a great place to click. Send me a text to find out who's available now. Text Vicar to 97148. <laughs> Thinking of converting to Catholicism? Text Father to 95653. Get photos now. Throughout the UK, pick up your mobile phone now. Hook up, have fun and chat to priests under 30. <laughs> New priests every week. For priests stage 30 to 45, text PRIME to 95653. Instant results. Get to know priests age 45 to 60. Text SILK to 95653. Make a connection now, wherever you live. It's only 10p a minute. What's stopping you? Well, I better be off. Oh, are you leaving? I haven't even shown you the butler yet. Sorry, Dad, I better go. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. Oh, lovely to see you. Mm. Thanks, Dad. Now, <laughs> yeah. It's a lovely lunch. Well, uh, parsnips, anyway. <laughs> you can't even eat chicken. Well, you see, Mum, in vegetarianism, the chicken is sort of considered to be an animal. Uh, what with it, um... Well, it's an animal, isn't it? Look, I I'm gonna... I'm gonna head to the station, so... Jeff. Oh, yes. Oh, now, Chris, look, your mother and I have been talking, and we would like you to have this so you can get your car fixed up. <laughs> oh, God, Dad, I can't take that. It's, it's too much. No, oh, don't be silly. Just take it. Mum, the operation, you... You need this much more oh, than I need my no. car. It's fine, Chris, really. Look, Chris, your mum says she likes the cataracts. She says it gives everything a lovely milky quality. It's like living inside a dream or a memory, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. And the rubbish they have on TV these days. It, it, it's like having my own mini filters inside my eyes. I can hardly make out Trevor Eve's face anymore. <laughs> so you say you'd be helping us out by taking the money off our hands. Just pop it in your pocket. <sighs> You're being ridiculous. Look. I'm not taking it. Oh, please, Chris. No, Barbara. Chris has made up his mind. He's a man, after all. Not a boy. Thanks, Dad. You remember that summer we played for Otterley St Mary? <sighs> I was at number six. You were at number eight. <sighs> Great days. <laughs> Quick, Barbara, put it in his pocket. Oh, what did you do that for? Oh, give it here. Oh, for God's sake, Dad. <laughs> Call it your Christmas check. Or your Christmas uh, and birthday check rolled into one. Uh, birthday. <laughs> so oh, that was just something to open. It wasn't your main present. <laughs> it, it's only because we love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, call it a gift, not a loan. <laughs> not loan, yours. Anyway, we're we dead. <laughs> no. <laughs> Barbara, book. Not Woodhouse. Wilbur Smith. Hard back. <laughs> Too late. Too late. It's yours. <laughs> Cable tie his legs together, Barbara. I'm going to give him a lift home. Excuse me. What hell? <laughs> I just didn't see him. He's unconscious. We need an ambulance. Yeah, ambulance. We're in North Park. It's the, the Churchgate Street entrance. Shit. Well, he's unconscious. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, right. Oh, is he coming round? Stay with us. There's an ambulance on its way. Is there? Is he trying to say yeah. something? What is it? Is there any chance of a threesome? <laughs> or an ambulance. Or an ambulance. One's on its way. Good. We'll wait for it. We'll wait for it. <laughs> That sleep not, do not surrender to the pain. Oh, but Farius, I grew weak. I have been impaled. The cold thrust of steel has pierced my skin. No, your ordeal will soon be over, and you will rise again. The greatest of all seducers. There you go, mate. <laughs> a glass of water. Don't worry about it, it happens a lot the first time. For emptying the contents of my stomach on your Ottoman rug, sir, I offer my sincerest apologies. Uh -huh. Can I crack on or what? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Proceed with the design, as discussed. Right. And you're absolutely sure you still want the name Chanella, with bright flames burning from it in all directions? Ah, oh, yes, of that I'm quite, quite sure. Right. Fiancé, is she? Oh, no. But she is destined to be mine. <laughs> she is an hair technician 
uh, Tony and Guy. <laughs> so impressed was she with the elegance and noble curve of Horstadt's aquiline brow that she did wantonly caress his skull and then made intimate inquiries as to his plans for this summer's vacances. <laughs> there can be no question. She was bewitched. <laughs> yeah, I maybe wouldn't get her name tattooed just yet. Maybe in henna. Uh, we've got a lot of other nice designs in this book, actually, as it goes. Ah, yes, the, uh, the swallow is quite becoming. <laughs> the Celtic runic design also somewhat fetching. <laughs> I'm not sure the snake is for me, but... Uh, <laughs> take it away. Here we go. Oh, babe, look, it's last of the summer wine. Yes, very good, thank you, yes. Get an ink down, you two. I'm getting a cool tattoo. <laughs> the name Chanella, with flames burning from it in all directions. Hairdresser Chanella, haven't you heard? Heard? <laughs> she really was tasty. In the name of Hartus, could you not leave but one stone unturned for a brother of the song? Been a while, is it, mate? <laughs> right, that's it. Oi, oi, you getting a taste from the fellas, eh, lads? Up yours. <laughs> Can I have any chewing gum, young apprentice, sir? He's been at the scampy knickknacks. <laughs> Now, we're after the pendle oak mushroom. The holy grail of edible fungi. It's got a colour like burnt ochre and a taste like filet mignon steak. Oh, dude, look, there it is. Oh, isn't she a beaut? Imagine that dressed with a lug of olive oil and a dash of lemon juice. Oh, just imagine it. Oh, we've got the old camping stove right here, so we can cook it up right now. Only trouble is, it's a bit too high. You fall down from that height, you're going to do yourself a serious injury. We'd be crazy to risk it. So we're going to get us two down for a ten meal deal. You just stick it in the oven. All the hard work's done for you. They even throw in a bottle of wine? How do they make a profit? Not our problem! Hey! <laughs> okay, we can have those back in three weeks' time. Thank you very much. Hello. Can I have Emma, please? Emma the book or Emma the DVD? Uh, no, Emma the prostitute. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. We're new prostitutes now. <laughs> yes, she should be in. Um... Oh, yeah. There she is. Time, Yuri. Is it to come alone? <laughs> Don't worry about them, they're with me. They're just a prep school under 12 rugby team. <laughs> Have you got the export licenses? Have you got the money? What is it, boy? What is it? Get behind the trail. <laughs> the money's in the case. Nice doing business with you. If you call betraying your country good business. Come on. Come on. Jarvis. <laughs> I think one of the reasons why we're such a great couple is we are like total opposites of each other. Chalk and cheese. I say tomato, she says tomato, just on so many levels. And that makes our relationship just sparky and edgy and zingy, you know? I mean, we are literally the complete opposite of each other. For example, I'm not a dick. <laughs> Hello? No! Yeah, we 
Well, you tell him if he hasn't got it sorted soon, I'm going to come over there and I'm going to wipe the bloody floor with him. What's up, Ken? Jeff spilt something on the floor of the warehouse. Going to help him mop it up later. <laughs> How's the world of beds, Phil? Oh, it's over, Ken. I oh, quit. I just ain't got it in me anymore. You don't need a prostate to run a bed shop. <laughs> now everything's gone up the jump, all right, except a feet. I'm hanging up me valence. You're having a shammy chat with Barney. What, Phil Mason retired? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm too long in the tooth for this weasel. I'm at the end of me Mills McCartney. I've got a container load, a sleepy down, snuggle up, microfiber memory mattresses sitting on a dockside in Umami, and no way of getting them here. Soothe me with some carpet talking. I need to calm down. <laughs> The bloody Japanese! Tell me about it. I'll never forgive them for what they did to my dad. It was torture, Phil. No other word for it. That bloody futon. <laughs> Took years off his life. Why did he have to buy it? Well, they are space-saving, Phil. You can't deny that. So is a sofa bed! So is a sofa bed! <laughs> they knew we had our own way of dealing with overnight guests, but they just couldn't stop themselves. Well, you have to admit it, and I know I'm treading on eggs here, but as a nation, they do look very well rested, the Japanese. Grant. Grant. <laughs> but retire? People like us don't retire. We keep on working every day, God sends, till one day we're reaching up to get a box of new phones off of a high shelf, insisting that we don't need no help when we suddenly keel over from a massive coronary. <coughs> yep. No. <laughs> Besides, what else are you going to do? Your life is best. I could go travelling, take Cheryl three away. You can't explore the world with an agoraphobic wife, Phil. Where are you going to go? Couple of relaxing weeks in the kitchen, a two centre holiday in the box room. Believe you me, are you they them? It ain't gonna work. Then I'll stay at home, spend some time with the what's the names, the what the calls, the uh, the kids, the kids. <laughs> Hello? No. <laughs> when I feel up against it at work, there's something I turn to that always gives me great strength. The good book. <laughs> Not this again. Ah, classic cobalt. Many's the time that's helped me out when I've been down. Oh, Tis pretty, Ken. I'll give you that. Or maybe you'd find some solace in Executive Parsley. <laughs> no, 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 no. My problems aren't to be solved in those pages. I'm going to get on the blower to Japan and come down on them like a clown of bricks. That's the fillet. That's the man I know and love. I'm going to need a new box of phones off of the high shelf. You want a hand with that? No, no, no. I'll be fine. All right, then. See ya. Ooh, Jesus H from Steps. <laughs> Hello, I'd like to return, Emma, please. Uh, <clears throat> I am a couple of days late. Two days late. Uh, then you you would have to go and speak to um <clears throat> to Yirko. <laughs> You have 65 pence fine. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks very much. English? Yes. Brisbane, Manchester United. The Beatles, David Beckham, Cauliflower Cheese, Habitat, Fiona Bruce. Anything over 240 by 165 by 5 millimetres counts as a large letter. Yes. Such memories, forgive me. Though I am originally of Reading and I am living here in the beautiful France since the six months, I cannot forget her. Right, uh, well, I'd better be on my way. No, no, but please, I have envy to practice my English tongue. Uh, <laughs> What is this thing that it is that is this thing that is the thing that you're looking for? Well, I was going to check out the cathedral. Uh, you know, uh, Sacré-Cœur? Sorry? Sacré-Cœur. Please? Sacré-Cœur? Say it again. Sacré-Cœur. It's here. Ah, Sacré-Cœur. Yeah. Uh, how to say in English? Uh, turn right, straight right, right again, straight right, straight right, straight right, right again, straight right, then just look for the massive cathedral. Thanks. Can you lend me 20 euros? <laughs> Today we stand united under the call of God. <laughs> Today we fight a thousand men, perhaps more. Today our divine father calls unto us to rise up against an unholy foe. Hey! <laughs> Do you waver? No! Do you pause? No! Forget not 
of the destruction of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Fire! Shame! Forget not of the barbarism of their conquering of the holy city of Jerusalem. Shame! Shame! On your hands! Shame! We cannot withstand further abuses. No! no. no this sir. ends today! Yes! Today! My lord, my lord, the enemy is using fires to disguise their numbers. There's actually 3,000 men, not 1,000. Oh. <laughs> okay, no, all right, we're not doing it. Not doing it. <laughs> Yeah, we're not doing it. It's off. <laughs> what? The capture of Jerusalem! Ah! The destruction of the Holy Church! Ah! 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 I can hear you. <laughs> Look, Ben, today, when I said this happens today, that was before I knew there was, like, loads and loads of them. <laughs> yeah? So it doesn't end today. It ends some other day. When there aren't blooming millions of them, there's just, there's just a few of them. Okay, and on that day, we shall fight. On that day, will you be with me? <laughs> good. That's, that's good enough for me. Good. Well done. Oh. oh, that just gets better and better. Oh. Oh. Hey, I better go. Oh, no, don't stay here. Oh, okay. Darling, I left my phone here. OK. Uh, this is a difficult situation. Take it easy, Dan. Yeah, Dan, I, I think we should just try and deal with this like adults. Yeah. What? What? You know, I think Dan. we should just take a moment. Take a moment? Yes. What? Yeah, just... Dan. Oh, shut up, no more talking from you. Hey, come on. Joe! How could you do this to me? Dan, it's... Right, get up. Right, get up. No, Wait, Dad, get up. No. Wait, Dad, get up. Wait, get up, just Dad. shut up. Dad. Shut up! Ow, oh, for God's sake! I'm going to kill you! Dad. Dad. I'm going to kill you! Dad. Oh, shit. What is it? I've got to take the bins out. <laughs> Bollocks! <laughs> well, you could be forgiven for thinking that after all the tributes, biographies, documentaries, even conspiracy theories about Diana, Princess of Wales, not another word could be written about her. Well, you'd be wrong because our very own royal correspondent, Terry Devlin, has now added his version of events to the canon. Terry, you were, you were very close to the princess, weren't Oh, you? very, very, very close indeed, Jeremy, that's right. In fact, it would be fair to say that Diana, then the Princess of Wales, formerly Lady Diana Spencer, latterly Her Royal Highness, the Queen of Hearts, <laughs> looked upon me with those bewitching eyes, very much as her most trusted member of the Fourth Estate. Sheep-like as she was herself, I think she recognised in me, I like to think, a kindred sheep. Or at least very much in sheep's clothing amongst an otherwise wolf-laden breath pack. <laughs> right, so you've written a book revealing intimate details about her private life. That I have, Jeremy, that I have. <laughs> it's called The Crumbs from Under the Table, Princess <laughs> I see. I am flinging wide the gates, lifting the lid, as it were, shining a torch whence ne'er hath light been cast afore, <laughs> on a very private face of the then Royal Highness, Princess of Wales. <laughs> and these um, revelations mainly centre around a collection of personal effects which came into your possession following an unforgettable day at Kensington Palace in 1988, correct? Uncannily so, Jeremy, yes. So, uh, <laughs> what sort of things are we talking about? I mean, photos, diaries? I feature, amongst many, many, many other things, a TV guide from September the 18th, 1988, <laughs> in which the princess, I believe, may be responsible for having circled an episode of Howard's Way. <laughs> One or two cotton buds from the staff toilet. A toilet, it might be said, which could have been used by none other than the Princess of Wales herself. Um, and that's it, is it? Oh, no, 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 far from it, no. A sachet of oil of Yule from before it was Ole. Uh, and I believe there's a, a private letter from St James's Palace which you're reported to have under lock and key at an undisclosed location. Does the book give any clues as to the content of that? Let us just say that it represented an opportunity for the princess. It was, Jeremy, an invitation for her to transfer the entirety of her balance to a rate of 13.4%, which it must be remembered <laughs> was a very, very competitive rate at that time. Junk mail. If you wish. Uh, <laughs> everyone gets junk mail. Well, this is a book very much for everyone. <laughs> she was, let us not forget, the people's princess. princess. <laughs> yeah, um, great. Well, uh, thank you, Terry. Uh, in a moment, we'll be <laughs> meeting a man whose campaign to save a school for the blind very nearly landed him in prison. <laughs> Um, 
Whatever he's seen. Ultimate blood? Uh, yes. Uh, can I have one? Fifteen halves and one adult, please. It's an eighteen. The clever bastard. <laughs> Three months on me. Me boy of Paris. Me one mama. Ah, me one mama too. Mamu. 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 have changed. Smell. Chicken. Struggling for Christmas inspiration? How about Armstrong and Miller in a different form? Their book is available now. John Kalshar and Deborah Stevenson to look forward to tomorrow night. The Impressions Show is at 10.25. <laughs>